Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Wet Shaving with Angela. I'm Angela, and today's going to be a good shave and a good day. And this is going to be a really exciting shave for me because one of the items that I'm going to be using for my for the first time ever in my shave is this. I'm going to get a better image of it. The Eclipse, let's see if you can see it. I don't know if you can see that, but this is the Eclipse Red Ring Razor with, hold on. Let's see if I'm a little guy upside down, sorry. With the Art Deco, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got the Art Deco Solar Eclipse design. The Eclipse Red Ring is a razor I've been on the hunt for for about two years now. I've been searching and searching for a good bargain on this razor. And I found one on Etsy for a price. I'm not going to say the price, but it was under three. I'll say I thought it was under $300 that I paid for this razor. But I believe it's, but I'm not going to have my first shave with this razor. There's a few interesting things, facts about this razor. This was made between the years of 1932 to 1940 in Sheffield, England by McNeil and Company, or by Robert McNeil and Company. Um, other facts, I, what do I have written down? Sorry, I, I'm reading my notes. It was an, ah, this is an early on adjustable razor, meaning, you see these lines at the hand, at the knob, at the knob of the handle and the heart here? You, you could easily adjust how aggressive the, a shave you get by twisting the knob, and they advertise it as a, as a micrometer adjustment. Cause you see the lines on the knob are the micrometer adjustment knobs. So you tighten it to the bottom, and you adjust it to the shave you want. I'm going to have it set at two notches above the bottom notch, which is like, which may be a level three. Like, let's say bottom notch is one. This is, I'll have it set at level three. And I'm really happy to have this Eclipse Red Ring in my den. It's in pristine condition. No plate loss. The handle is not even cracked. I'm really happy to have it. And I think it's an early design of the Eclipse Red Ring because it has the Art Deco head on it. So that'll be the razor I'll be using. Blade of choice, going vintage with the Gillette Super Stainless the Spoiler Blades. Soap and Aftershave of choice. DR Harris's Marlboro, which to my nose, it's got a wonderful scent of... Let's see here. Yeah, it's got a wonderful scent of cedar and sandalwood mixed together. Brush of choice. My Simpsons Chubby 2 Synthetic. Uh, and a little bit of back history on back to the history on the Eclipse Red Ring. It, it is plated in chrome, which in the 1930s was a very rare thing for a razor to be plated in. Most safety razors were plated in either gold, silver, or nickel. So a chrome plating was very unusual for the 1930s. Also, let me show you another feature. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a magnet. There's a magnet inside the knob of the handle of the razor. This was a feature advertised as a way to pick up drop. Like, let's say you dropped a blade in the sink, or you dropped a blade, and you wanted to, and you wanted to safely pick up the blade. You'd use your Eclipse Red Ring razor, and use the magnet in the base of the handle, and it would pick up the blade just like that. And, it's, and I tested out the magnet earlier; it does work very well. So I'm going to start wetting my face and lathering up for the first pass with the green. How's everyone doing out there today? I'm sorry, I'm from a little excited. I'm just. Really excited to finally shave with one of my Holy Grail razors. But I'm really excited to finally have this in my den. It came in the black Bakelite case with the B, with model, which is which they said, which the Bakelite case says it's model BB on the inside, and everything was and everything looked excellently made, preserved. Like the case was well preserved, the razor was ex is astonishingly well preserved for its age. You know, because many times with the Clips Red Ring razors, there's usually a crack in the handle. Or, yeah, usually there's a crack in the handle or there's some plating loss from the chrome aging over time. But this one looks, but my Eclipse Red Ring, it looks brand spanking new. 
And I love D.R. Harris's Marble Scented Soap in the After Shave. I know it's not for everyone, but some people find it in the scent a little off-putting. To me, it's a nice fall weather soap and splash. You know, a nice mixture of cedar and sandalwood. And if you love your British shave soaps, you may, if you love a good refined British shave soap, as I've recommended in other videos, look into D.R. Harris. Their soaps are a little bit pricey. You know, like for a for a shave soap with the wooden bowl, it's usually going to run you about 20 some 30 some dollars. But it's a triple milled soap that will last you a long time. And I've had this soap for well over a year now. And I've, I'm still getting plenty of shaves out of it. Actually, I've had this for a year and a half. Or two years. I forget, I forget how long I've had this. But a long time. Definitely. Like at least a year and a half or two. Or a year, a year and a half I've had this D.R. Harris shave soup. That I bought from Amazon. But I get, but I get a fantastic lather from this soap still today. Maybe a little more water. Let's get a little more water and a little more product to brush. Get a nice even coating. There we go. There we go. That's the lather I'm looking for. And I find Dr. Harris soaps to be very pleasant to use. There are better. If you're not a fan of their Marlboro soap and aftershave, they have much more pleasant scents like Arlington, Windsor, Lavender. They have all different scented soaps and creams that are worth checking out. Especially their soaps being triple milled. You get a lot of bang for your buck out of that. Especially from an old British brand like D.R. Harris, which has been around since 1790. Starting out as a perfumer. Now it's time to shave with the Eclipse Red Ring Razor at setting, I believe it's three or three notch or two notches above the bottom or tightest, so I'll say it was level two or three setting. And another note, thing to note to note is it's got a it's got a hybrid he he head where it's a mixture of both closed comb and open comb at the same time on both sides. Very efficient. Very, very efficient this razor is. I can hear this, I can literally hear the stubble being cut cleanly. I'm going to let you tighten up the razor to the bottom because I do sense quite a bit of blade feel. So now I have it at its mildest, which is still very efficient. Great razor. Back when quality meant more than anything else than making a razor. Even at its mildest setting, it's 
it's make it's got a lot of audio audio feedback to it or audible feedback which is great which is a great resource that lets you know whether you're scraping your skin or cutting the whiskers cleanly or not cutting at all Excellent razor. Now I see why a lot of wet shavers covet this razor so much. It's just an excellent performer. And it does take modern blades. Even though the original Eclipse Red Ring blades, or even though the original Eclipse Razor blades were the curved blades with the three holes in them, they, this razor will accept the modern make double-edged blade. I'm bump it up a little bit, back to one or two, or two or three, whatever. There we go. That's the, that's what I'm looking for. I think underneath my on, on my upper lip, I had to be more careful than I usually do with the rest of my face. That was the first pass with the grain. We're going to relather for the second pass across the grain. And the first pass was very nice. Very nice. I'm going to keep it at the level two or three setting that I have it at right now. As I, as I said, when I was shaving my neck, I felt a little bit of residual stubbiness. So I bumped it back up to three, two or three. I'm going to leave it at that for the shave. I knocked it down to one for the um, upper lip area. Yeah. It is a very effective razor. Like, it, like it's, it's, I won't say it's super aggressive, which I don't need a super aggressive razor all the time, but it's efficient enough to knock down my stubble. Very efficient. It's a very efficient razor that, feel, that, to me, feels very comfortable to use, which is important in a razor. It has to be efficient and it has to be very comfortable. I'm not saying mild, I'm just saying comfortable, like enjoyable. Because otherwise, what, what's the point in using a razor if it's too aggressive? And if it's too mild, it's not even worth it, darn, because it won't shave the stubble in three passes. Or not, or even just, because I've, I've, I've bought razors that were too mild for my liking, that left too much to be desired after the third and final pass. Most notably my clicks easy flow. That left a lot, that left quite a bit behind even with a feather blade after the third and final pass. And I was like, what the heck did I pay money for this for? I don't know, just my personal opinion. Maybe, I'm, maybe it was just a razor I had at the time, I don't know. But yeah, there are some razors that are too mild for their own good, and there's razors out there that are too aggressive for their own good. This seems to be a good middle ground razor, even though it's adjustable, and you can change how mild or aggressive a shave you get. I think they say, from what I've read, you can knock it, you can bump it up to like five notches. Four or five notches from the original bottom notch. Because again, there's no numbers on the Eclipse Red Ring, but you just gotta know what you're doing. Time to go for the second pass again across the green. Just lovely.
hear that razor, hear that razor sing. Just a beautifully made razor. Yeah, and it was made manufactured between 1932 to 1940 by James McNeil and Company in Sheffield, England. And from my research, the company was originally well known for their magnets. And so they incorporated magnets into their razor, which I'm surprised more razor manufacturers haven't done what the Clips Red Ring did in putting a magnet at the base of the razor to pick up drop blades. Because that was really an ingenious idea right there. Having a razor that could pick up drop blades safely. So the, so as the user doesn't cut himself when trying to pick up a drop blade or risk cutting himself. So far, it's just a fantastic shade. I'm very happy to have this in my den. And the vintage Gillette spoiler blade is doing a great job cutting through the stubble. Even though it's a decades old blade, it still do it still does what it needs to do. And I will say this about the Arhara soaps, they're very slick once you get the right amount of water to product ratio. Because my razor is just gliding across my skin. And I'm really loving the hybrid comb action of this razor, which is, which, which as I said earlier, it's a hybrid of an open and closed comb on both sides. You get the aggression of an open comb with the forgivingness of a closed comb razor. And I'm surprised, this is another feature that I'm surprised more razor manufacturers don't follow suit in re replicating. That's the second pass. We're going to re the face for the third and final pass against the green. Just a great shave overall today. The second pass really knocked a whole bunch of stubble down. I'm going to put a little more water to the brush. This way we get all that slickness and ease the ability of building a great lather. This is a great soap anyways. Even if, like, even if you don't want the wooden bowl with the soap, you can buy the soap pucks by themselves for a fairly reasonable price. Depending on which vendors you go to, you just, you got, you just got to know your prices and whatnot and know what you're willing to spend. But man, this is a great soap, Marble Boil by D.R. Harris. If you like a good cedar wood and sandalwood scent mixed together, this is your soap to turn to. It's a simple two-note two soap with cedar, cedar and sandalwood. So I only need a little water to the brush. Put one more product on, why not?
I know I'm making a mess about the ladder, but you know what? I'm just enjoying this shave too much. This is just too good a shave to pass up on. We're gonna do partial. Great soap, great razor, great blade, great everything. And you know what? For the final pass, I'm gonna knock it down back to the to the lowest modest position for the against the green pass. Hmm. Maybe I'll bump it up one notch. That's it. That's the ticket. At level one, it was like doing next to nothing, or it didn't, or it sound like it was doing next to nothing. But at level two, you really start hearing it cut through the stubble with ease. Oh yeah, that's that's the stuff. Just an excellent shave so far today. Okay, that finishes the shave part of it. We're going to use our stupid pencil just to, just to staunch a few minor cuts I got, which I was probably which I probably got from yapping too much or not paying attention because this is a new razor to me. So it'll take a little learning to work, to, to know what the right level of aggression is as well as proper blade angle. Because whenever you get a new razor, you gotta learn its proper blade angle because it can be different from other razors. But this is this was an excellent shave overall. By far, this was an excellent shave. I gotta say. I'm gonna rinse off my face and apply the Dr. Harris Marlboro after shave. Time to splash on a little D.R. Harris Marble. Same scent as the soap, cedar, cedar and sandalwood. That's good. Just a classically refined British scent. Oh, I love the burn. That would, I'll, I have to say, today was an awesome shave, so I'm, 
So, as far as Eclipse Red Ring and everything else, I give it a thumbs up. And I want to wish everyone out there to have a good day and good shape, everyone. Goodbye.